Heisenberg's uncertainty relation is one of the most important equations in quantum mechanics. In this video, we will show you how to derive it by going over more general uncertainty relations derived by Schrödinger and Robertson. First of all, let us talk about the sigma in Heisenberg's uncertainty relation. This quantity is usually called standard deviation and is defined as the square root of the variance. In statistics, the variance of some quantity a is defined as the expectation value of the squared difference of the quantity and its expectation value. For some calculations, it's easier to write the variance as the expectation value of a squared minus the square of the expectation value of a. But for this video, we will use the first expression. In quantum mechanics, expectation values of operators are defined as the matrix element of the operator between states of the wave function. If we assume that A is a Hermitian operator, because that's what we usually deal with in quantum mechanics, we can write the variance of A as a bracket state of some new vector A, which we define like this. Similarly, for some other Hermitian operator B, we can write its variance as the bracket product of some state B, which is defined like this. If we now consider the product of the variances of those two operators, we can make use of the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. Since AA times BB is greater than or equal to the squared magnitude of AB, the product of variances is in the same way greater than or equal to AB squared. As you can see, this is where the inequality in Heisenberg's uncertainty relation comes from. Before we take the square root, let us simplify the right-hand side. The inner product of A and B is a complex number, and for a general complex number z, we can write its absolute square using its real and imaginary part like this. If we identify z with the inner product of a b, we can write it as psi a minus its expectation value times b minus its expectation value psi. By multiplying the brackets, we get four terms, from which only two remain. Note that since the expectation value of an operator is just a number, we can pull it outside of another expectation value. In the same way, we can write z star as the expectation value of b a minus the expectation values of a and b separately. If you recall the expression for the absolute square of z, we need the sum and the difference of z and its conjugate, which we can write in terms of commutators and anti-commutators. Returning to the product of the variances, we can now write them as being greater than or equal to the sum of those two terms that we just calculated. If we take the square root of this equation, we get the so-called Schrödinger uncertainty relation. Now this long square root term is obviously larger than if we simply ignore the first term. If we now consider only the left and rightmost terms of this inequality chain, we get a weaker condition called the Robertson uncertainty relation. You might wonder why we keep the imaginary unit in this expression. We could, of course, remove it since we're taking the absolute value of this term. However, if A and B are Hermitian operators, their commutator will be anti-Hermitian, meaning it will contain a factor of i. Therefore, the one over i in front of the term will cancel anyway. Finally, if we let A be the position operator and B the momentum operator, the commutator of x and p is i times h bar. Since this is just a number, its expectation value is also i times h bar, and we arrive at Heisenberg's uncertainty relation. As you can see, since the commutator of the position operator and the momentum operator is not zero, we are not able to measure their eigenvalues precisely at the same time since this would mean that the standard deviation gets zero, and zero cannot be larger than h bar over two. On the other hand, if you consider two operators that commute, like the squared angular momentum operator and the z component of angular momentum, the right hand side gets zero, and therefore their eigenvalues can be measured precisely at the same time. So whether or not two operators fulfill Heisenberg's uncertainty relation, depends on whether their commutator is zero or not. And that's pretty much it for this video. 
Thanks for watching.